Our reporter Ashling Reardon has been looking at some of the most common mental health conditions and at how it is very possible for sufferers to get control of these conditions and live very normal lives. Today she speaks to Jan who tells her about how she manages her bipolar disorder. We're in the process of hiring someone to look after a coordinator position in the voluntary assistance scheme. Yeah. So um, that's underway. Interviews are happening this week and next week. Busy at work. Jan McDonough is Press and External Relations Manager at the Bar Council of Ireland. At 40, she manages her bipolar disorder successfully, but it took years for her to get the right diagnosis. Um, since I was 15, I had a lot of hospital tests. I was very tired. I was exhausted. Um, then that developed into highs and lows and I was getting treatment for that. But nothing actually pinpointed what it exactly was and what the right treatment was. So when I was 24, 25, I went into hospital in St. Patrick's and my doctor there diagnosed dysphoric elation which is lows and bad highs, and um, find the correct treatment for me. So how did Jan feel when she found out? In a weird way, I was kind of delighted because finally someone had come along and said, this is it, this is how we're going to treat you, and it's all going to not end, but be managed. And that was great. And it also gave me something to look into. I love reading up exploring, finding out more information. So it gave me something very tangible that I could actually look into and say, OK, well, this works, that works. Have you tried exercise? Have you tried diet? Have you tried? So I had lots of questions and uh, I was lucky. I was surrounded by support systems that could answer those questions and say, well, that mightn't work. But if you try this. So um, it, it was good in that sense. Yeah. And along with the support systems, Jan has a great relationship with her boss. Jan McDonough. Well, I, the first person, you, if I can say this, the first person I met on coming to the Borough Council was Jan McDonough. She, we, she joined the organisation, I would say, um, a month or two before me. So she was the very first person I met on coming in. And uh, straight away, Jan's a very, as you, can, as you know, is very uh, a bullion and... Uh, what other word can I use? A great character, you know. So we settled down straight away. And of course, Janet looks after the, the press and media for us. And uh, she's been an excellent uh, person over the number of years been working together. I joined Jan and her colleagues on their coffee break to hear their thoughts on Jan and bipolar. Well, I've known Jan for about 12 or 13 years. But I have to say that I don't remember any particular time when I first became aware that she had uh, any illness or any difficulties. It just seemed to be something that came up along the way. It didn't seem to make any real difference. Um, it didn't change my impression of her. It didn't seem to change anybody else's impression of her. Jan will say publicly, I have suffered from bipolar disorder, but I'm not sure that everybody would be brave enough or willing to do that. Um, you still get a lot of people who say, oh yes, ah, we have that in the family, but don't say it to anybody. I think that Jan's a really good example to say there's someone who holds down a stressful job, is, you know, does all the things that everybody else does, doesn't particularly well, in particular her wit shines through. And I think that that's really important to say, well, maybe I shouldn't judge this person or maybe I shouldn't have a fear about what this person will do based on a preconception of something that's totally outdated. Jan's husband is very supportive and has seen an improvement over the years. I have to say that I can see, well, it doesn't, it doesn't happen that often anymore. Uh, um, and when it does, when it does happen, um, it's, only, it's only, a couple of, only a couple of days. And um, you can see the changing of the mood. But it is, once again, especially in the last couple of years, it's been only once or twice. And uh, once we know, we know the, she knows she has to talk to somebody, and another advice is that we talk to somebody as soon as possible, a friend, a family, a doctor, somebody specialised in that, and everything will be fine. And running is one of the many things Jan does to keep her healthy. Um, at the grand old age of 34, I took up a learn to run class, which uh, doesn't sound as silly as it could. Um, and with a group of friends, 
I had read that exercise is very good for bipolar, for depression, for anxiety. And there's a bit of everything going on. So I took up running and it was great because the medication makes me retain weight very easily. So I was sort of trying to deal with that as well. Um, but it's wonderful for clearing the mind because when you are panting along, sweating on a hard, cold road in the middle of a rainstorm, you can't think about your problems. And by the end of it, you're so euphoric just to have completed the 5K or the 10K or whatever it may be, your problems seem very distant <laughs> to you. So um, I find the running any form of exercise really, really beneficial, really beneficial. I can't stress it enough. And that was our reporter Ashing Rudin speaking to Jan McDonough. Well, Professor Paul Ferran from St. Patrick's Hospital joins me now. Professor, thanks a million for coming in. You really have to hand it to Jan, don't you, speaking out about bipolar. I mean, it is still quite a stigmatised Condition. Absolutely. I mean, like many mental illnesses, um, people still in Ireland and in other countries still don't tend to speak about them. And, you know, that's fine in one sense. But I think um, that piece very nicely shows that, um, you know, having, you know, and bipolar disorder is considered a serious mental health disorder. She's living a normal life. Yes, she still has, uh, as her husband said, the occasional little glitches, but they're easily dealt with. They don't rule her life. She's in control of her life by the looks of things. And she's getting on with her life. The same with other people. If you had diabetes or a thyroid problem, you know, you wouldn't be defined by your disorder. Yeah, and it's a great way to see mental health conditions, Absolutely, it? and it's the way just... we're moving in, in mental health is, is towards a more recovery-based model. Even if, you know, um, you still have the occasional uh, relapse, um, you, it still doesn't mean that you're ruled by your disorder. You still get on and live a life, you know. And can I ask you, I mean, what is bipolar? What's going on in the brain? Sure, well, it's, it's a mood disorder, and as the name implies, bipolar, there are two poles to it, and those poles are that you can have episodes of depression, um, and you can also have episodes of elation or mania. It used to be called in the olden days manic depression, and a lot of people would be more familiar with that still. Um, and essentially with, with depression, um, I won't go into too much detail, but things tend to slow down. Your mood becomes depressed, um, you, uh, your sleep becomes disturbed, your energy, your interest in life all become, you can even get suicidal in more severe cases. And then that can alternate um, uh, with periods where you, almost the opposite happens, where your mood becomes elevated, things start to speed up, your thinking, your speech becomes speed, you have loads of energy, you don't need as much sleep, you can sometimes do things that you wouldn't normally do, um, and sometimes it goes undiagnosed, especially in its milder form, people just think, well it's my personality, I'm just sort of somebody who tends to have, you know, periods of a few weeks where I'm just buzzing with activity and then uh, I crash a little bit. And can I ask you, I mean, does anyone know what causes it? Is like, is there something wrong with the hardwiring of the brain when you're born or can something cause bipolar? Yeah, well, again, like most um, uh, health disorders, whether it's uh, cardiovascular disease or mental health disorders, the cause are complex. We do know that there is a genetic element to bipolar. That's no doubt. We know from family studies and, and twin studies and even some early genetic studies that there is a gen genetic component. But there are also environmental things. Uh, we know that uh, people, before they have an episode of either depression or elation, can often have a lot of stress in their lives and there's some um, preliminary research suggesting a link between early life events and the later development of bipolar. Really? Yeah. A lot of stress in early life could yeah. precipitate Yeah, it. now that, that, that's, it's, it's very difficult to make links between early events and uh, things that happen later in life, but there is a certain association. I suppose the message from this is that um, even if you do, let's say, have a family history or that it runs in your family, it doesn't mean you're destined to get it. It also doesn't mean, it means that even if you get it, that there's not nothing you can do about it. There are plenty of things you can do to... And Professor, can I ask you, I mean, if you know you have mental illness in your family or mm. conditions mm. like this, can you take extra good care of your mental health and maybe prevent it ever hitting you? Like we heard Jan talking about exercise there. Yes, or... there are certain things you can do to minimise uh, things. Um, I, I mean, there's a, a lot of work being done in trying to... Uh, I mean, prevention is very difficult because nobody, no matter how good we are, can say, you're never... I can't say to you, I can't say to myself, I'm never going to have schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. Um, but nonetheless, even if you have the disorder, there are a lot of things. And I think um, that uh, video uh, uh, film you showed is... a great example of somebody, if you like, taking control of their disorder. Um, she's lucky she's got a good network of friends and family who are very supportive. They know about her illness. She's uh, very well informed about it. That's put 
that puts you a bit more in the driving seat. It, it gives you back a, your self-confidence. You're not ruled by the illness. You're not waiting for the next episode to happen. And, you know, simple things, things that we should all be doing regardless of our mental health, things like running, uh, eating a sensible diet, having a routine. Yeah, exercise. I mean, that works for anyone, doesn't it? Absolutely. If a yeah, stressful yeah, day, yeah, go for a run, yeah. you feel great. I mean, I'm again, sure yeah. everybody looking at that, you know, said, yeah, that, that applies to me as well. I can imagine going out for a run and my sort of worries drifting away, you know, yeah. and feeling good in all sorts of ways. You know? And in terms of treatment for bipolar, mm. is it a, a drug-based treatment? Yes, I mean, the, the mainstay of treatment for bipolar disorder, first of all, is making, I, I should point out, making an accurate diagnosis. Um, Jan sort of touched on that, that, you know, uh, the earlier you get the diagnosis, uh, the better. You, it, a lot of people spend a few years wondering, what's wrong with me? And, and um, so making the diagnosis... Sorry, can I, before you, sure. what age does it hit normally? Like, would children get this or it does can it vary, develop? It's, it's very vanishingly rare almost in children. I mean, children can get it, but it's mainly um, anywhere from your late teens uh, to 20s or, or even 30s. Um, you know, it can... Uh, and it can happen later, but mainly it's between late teens uh, up to 30. So, and so once you get a, an accurate diagnosis, there are drugs that will help? Absolutely. They're called mood stabilizers. The one that people would most know about or be most familiar with is lithium. And these are very effective medications. They reduce your chances of a relapse by anywhere from 60 to 70, 75 percent, um, which, is, which is pretty good. And how good. does that work? Nobody knows. L That's lithium, <laughs> um, it, it's, it's interesting, a lot of the, the me medications in medicine and psychiatry uh, that are very effective, we often don't know. Lithium's been around for a long time. It, it's the simplest drug known in, in medicine. It's, it's basically an element. Um, it's, it, it's reckoned that it probably stabilises the, uh, the brain cells, um, uh, but nobody's absolutely clear exactly how it works, but it does. It's been around a long time. There have been a lot of very good uh, research studies and trials looking at it, and it does reduce your uh, re rate of relapse. So along it works even if we don't know what it does? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, thank you very much indeed, Professor Ferrin, for coming in this morning.